If you are someone who is not familiar with this phenomenon, with this topic, what you heard in there was bombshell. There were multiple people, witnesses who under oath, and these are former military officials, some, uh, talking about a program that exists within the government to retrieve crashed UFOs or UAPs that have been made by non-human intelligence. This is the biggest story unfolding before their eyes. Of a UFO battle in orbit around Earth. I believe that's the much anticipated UFO hearings for the second bout has came. Despite all the ridicule and stigma pushed onto it by the mainstream media and lack of coverage of the actual hearing, the second hearing shows us another in-depth look into the systematic cover-up of the UFO subject since the 1940s and basically exposes that there is an ongoing cover-up of a UFO crash retrieval program and a cover-up of the reality that we are not alone and there are other species visiting our planet. So here in Aussie UFO News, what we do is we give you the real truth and the real news, which the mainstream propaganda media will not give you in your local news, no matter where you are in the world, and especially not in Australia, as they're trying to constantly censor us and now push new laws to basically censor every part of information that is true that we can access. Soon I won't be able to make videos like this. Here's the recent recap of the UFO hearings and all the highlights. These technologies are not made by any government. Who's making them? Private companies or are you implying they are crafted by a non-human intelligence? Well, ma'am, that's precisely why we're here. Uh, the problem is that, temporally speaking, over decades, not just the last 10 years, before, to put this in perspective, when Are we these care, private companies you're implying, or is this uh, non-human intelligence? It may be both. Uh, okay. When it comes to Blue Force technologies, are, I would not be able to discuss Okay. Them. Are you read into secret UAP crash retrieval programs? Um, we would have to have a conversation in a closed session, ma'am. I signed documentation three years ago that restricts my ability to discuss specifically crash retrievals. Um, I submitted for my book through the Dopser process, which took a year mm -hmm. for it to be reviewed. And what is in the book is what I was told I'm allowed to talk about. Uh, Has the government conducted secret UAP crash retrieval programs, yes or no? Yes. Holy Okay, were they designed to identify and reverse engineer alien craft, yes or no? Yes. People don't realize the significance of them two questions and them two answers. The TikTok object engaged in 2004. Are you familiar with the incident, the TikTok incident? Yes, sir. And that's almost 20 years ago, right? Yes, sir. It's been said there are more videos, documents, and reports related to this incident. Do you believe the information regarding the TikTok incident should be available to all members of Congress and your expertise? What reason the would the Department of Defense possibly have for not releasing information that's over 20 years old? Uh, thank you, Congressman. I don't think there's any good reason to withhold information and important data, especially of national security concern from Congress. Well, what, would the, what would they say? I'm, I will speculate, sir, that uh, they don't want to share that kind of information because it reveals weaknesses in our ability to monitor and protect our airspace. Okay. In your written testimony, you claim last year's UAP hearing before this oversight committee confirmed that UAP-related information is, well, it's not only being withheld, um, but that elements of the government are engaging in a disin disinformation campaign to include personal attacks designed to, incredit, to discredit UAP whistleblowers. Could you elaborate on that statement a little? Yes, sir. Uh, earlier this year, I met with the DOD's All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, and what I thought would be a 90-minute meeting just to meet with leadership turned out to be an hours-long influence operation on me, where I was, they attempted to co convince me of the validity of the very flawed and error-ridden error historical records report. Uh, in addition, uh, they, uh, they tried to have me question very valid UAP reports like the Tic Tac incident and even even coming to uh, yeah. stating possibly that uh, the, the Tic Tac was American technology uh, and then and of course if you ask David Fravor or Alex Dietrich the two witnesses they were convinced it was otherwise. If they're trying to change a high-level general's perception on the UFO facts that just happened in front of his eyes 
Imagine what they've been doing to the public for the last 50, 60, 70 years. Why do you think the Commander of Fleet Forces Operations Officer never discussed the incident again? Uh, sir, I'm speculating because I didn't have an exchange with him, but I, I believed it to be part of a special access program, the information and the video, which we have known now it was. And uh, he, he realized he couldn't share that openly with the recipients of the email, and therefore the email was pulled from everybody's account. My understanding is that this is, uh, the database is very large. It includes both the images, the videos, the still images, as well as the human intelligence, the reports, the raw data from individuals having these experiences. So in answer to your question, yeah, I mean, I think we're looking at a very large amount of data collected over many decades. And that data is, is held by the Department of Defense? Well, I will, I, sh I will say that after I published, I was told that this program that the USAP was actually um, managed by the Department of Defense, but held at the White House. Roger but that. that's a single source, and I, I don't have multiple sources to verify that. If we were in a secure setting, if we were in a SCIF, would you be able to provide or get access to something, whether it's a, a visuals or material that we could put our hands on, or biologics, that would convince me it would show me um, that that we have non-human origins. Sir, that decision would not be mine. That would be to the gatekeeper still in the U.S. government. And who would we, so if you were in our shoes, where would you go from here? How would you get that information? How would, where, you know, a lot of times we just don't know who to ask because we don't know um, where to go next. So if you were in our shoes, where would you go? Well, I, I prefer to answer that question in a closed session. However, we, we established Arrow for that very purpose. And unfortunately, under its previous leadership, it failed. Um, so one would hope that they would have the authorities necessary to do that. Um, let's hope that this new iteration of leadership uh, will be successful. Um, in, in the discussions, it's, it's simply about material or is there discussion about biolog? It, it was previously testified that there was biologics that were collected. Are you aware of any of that? I am, sir, aware of the reporting that biologics have been recovered. Again, my focus was more nuts and bolts, um, looking at the the physical aspects of these phenomenon, how they interacted around uh, military equities and nuclear equities. So I'm certainly not a medical expert. Um, I would not be able to probably provide you a whole lot of value in that simply because I don't have the expertise. But was anything described as that we have possession of bodies? Yes, yes. We have is it multiple types of creatures or? Uh, sir, I, I couldn't answer that. Um, I can tell you anecdotally that it was, it was um, discussed quite a bit when I was at the Pentagon. The problem is the coll supposed collection of these biological samples occurred before my time, in fact, before I was even born. And was this part of the Lockheed Martin discussion or was this a complete, the biologist is a completely separate? Um, separate yet related. Okay. Um, has, has anyone made contact? Sir, I'm sorry, could you specify? Has, has there been any, to your knowledge, any communication with a non-human life form? So the term communication is a bit of a trick word because um, there's verbal communication like we're having now. Uh, the problem is you also have nonverbal communication. And so I would say definitively yes, but from a nonverbal meaning, when a Russian reconnaissance aircraft comes into US airspace, we scramble two F-22s and we are certainly communicating intent and capability. Um, I think the same goes with this. We have these things that are being observed over controlled US airspace. Um, and they're not really doing a good job hiding themselves. They're making it pretty obvious they have the ability to even interfere with our, our nuclear equities and our nuclear readiness. Is, is um, the United States government or in our contractors, are they pulling you know, technology from this? Are they are they're reverse engineering this? Sir, as I previously stated, and please forgive me, um, I am not authorized to discuss specifics about crash retrievals. Um, I, again, I signed documentation with the U.S. government. Um, what I can say was, after a, a very thorough review process by the Pentagon, what I wrote about. And that was my limit, unfortunately, that it was given. Now, for all the closed-minded skeptics constantly whinging and holding the only bit of control that they can over this narrative, which is, why do they always have the excuse that they can only talk about this in a skiff? Well, that is the obvious evidence that there is a cover-up. If you're not allowed to talk about something, it's obviously true. So it'd be good if all you skeptics out there got that through your closed-minded perception of reality. Thank you. Yes, sir.
UAPs that seem to defy our current understanding of physics or our en engineering capabilities. It seems like they all do. Yes, I would agree with that. Does the U.S. government or private contractors, do they work with other foreign countries, China, for example, to exchange data quote from a source, uh, that intelligence data about UAP? Um, let me see if I can answer that a little bit more generally, ma'am, if mm -hmm. I may. Uh, we do have foreign material exploitation uh, programs. Um, that is something that is widely known, and that term itself is unclassified. How exactly that works becomes a bit sensitive. Uh, it's a discussion we could certainly have in a, in a closed session, if you like. We do work with international partners and allies quite often, not just in military exercises and workups, mm -hmm. but in other intelligence um, efforts as well. In terms of material that's given to private contractors, is certain material given to certain contractors because of their experience? So, for example, uh, if it's... Um, related to submerged and undersea propulsion, would it go to a co general contractor like General Dynamics? Yes, ma'am, absolutely correct. Um, different contractors have different levels of expertise. What's uh, Lockheed's expertise? Aerospace, ma'am. In, in the UAP space, that's all that... Uh, they wouldn't do submerged? I, no, I didn't say that, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, Lockheed Martin and others do quite a bit of work, both um, in our atmosphere, in space, and, and even underwater. There are there are certain um, efforts to, it's a tough question you're asking, you put me on the spot here. I'm, asking, I'm looking for the answer. Yes, ma'am, no, they, they are involved in a lot. Um, I would rather let Lockheed Martin explain um, the different domains that they are involved with. Um, uh -huh. Probably I'm not authorized to discuss that, but they are involved in a lot of, lot of different areas and domains. Admiral, flight safety risks for our pilots, based on what you've experienced and seen in your career. Uh, they were extensive, and one exercise I referred to where I received the email that was then deleted was uh, the, the pilots, and this is worth bringing out, there are debunkers out there who have said the GoFast video was just a balloon. That was only one video that was released. There were dozens of these encounters that pilots, uh, friends of Ryan Graves, who's in this room right here, uh, witnessed and, and caused significant safety concerns. And to almost call out an exercise and shut it down, it, it's extreme to say the least. How would you define, each of you, my last question, how would you define non-human biologics, non-human intelligence? What are we actually talking about? Admiral, and we'll go down the line. I don't think it's a stretch when you look at the diversity of life on this planet and the size of this universe to think that there would be more diverse, higher order, non-human intelligences throughout the universe. And that's probably what's visiting us. Um, I would take uh, the scientific approach. The, the, the definition would be the ability to react to a stimulus um, in a manner that uh, requires an intellectual thought process. I just don't know. I think we must be modest in our assumptions that we're looking for intelligence that could be biological. It might not. Non-biological. But what non-biological intelligence, what does that mean, though? Uh, artificial intelligence, ML, machines. We assume that all intelligence would be like us. And every time we look out in the universe, we are humbled relative to what we don't know in terms of the forms of intelligence and what it may take. I can assure you I probably can't ask you your question, but I think the ultimate answer is going to surprise us all. And there you have it, a historical hearing on a historical subject that's always been here, always been with us, and that's always been suppressed from us. The truth is slowly getting out. The question is, how hard will they go to cover it up further? Also, give us a follow on Instagram, Aussie UFO News, and check out my GTA channel, GTA Stories. Thank you.